Enjoy 1% merchant commission when you accept Lanka Pay cards. Contact these banks today. Minister of Power and Energy Kanchana Vijay Sekra today said he accepted the resignation of Ceylon Electricity Board Chairman MMC Ferdinando. He tweeted that CEB Vice Chairman Nalinda Ilangakon has been promoted to the post of Chairman. The CEB Chairman's resignation came days after his controversial remarks at a hearing of the Parliament's Committee on Public Enterprises. MMC Ferdinando had been questioned on how India's Adani Group was chosen to carry out a 500 megawatt renewable energy project in Poonarin and Mana. On November 24th, the President summoned me after a meeting and said India's Prime Minister Modi is pressurizing him to hand over the project to the Adani Group. President Gautabe Rajpaksa then denied the remarks made by the Sidon Electricity Board Chairman. The President had said he categorically denies authorization to award this project to any specific person or entity. The then CEB Chairman withdrew his statement within 24 hours of expressing those comments. He said he was very emotional when allegations were levelled at him at the Committee on Public Enterprises on Friday. MMC Ferdinando added he was under pressure at the COP session and admitted that he had made a false statement. Did the former CEB chairman lie at the COP hearing? The Committee on Public Enterprises, also called COP, conducts inquiries into the operations of state entities and reports to Parliament. Can officials holding responsible positions, like the one of the CEB chairman, make comments under pressure and based on emotions? COP chairman Professor Charita Herat told News First his committee will study the clarification issued by MMC Ferdinando. Although the CEB chairman has said he has withdrawn his statement, what had he written to Finance Secretary SR Artigala on the 25th of November last year? Ferdinando had said President Gautabe Rajpaksa had instructed him to award the tender for a 500 megawatt solar and wind power project to India's Adani Green Energy Company. He had mentioned that the instructions were issued after a meeting at the President's office on the 11th of November 2021. Ferdinando had said the President had informed him that the Adani Group had agreed to make a considerably large investment into the project. He said he believes the investment project will take place with the support of the Indian government and that the project proposal will be sent to the Board of Investment as a government-to-government -government deal. He had said that he was under pressure during the COPE sitting and that he was hungry. He said he doesn't know what he said. He wasn't under pressure at the COPE sitting but that was after the President responded to his. Who is Ferdinando? He is not an official who doesn't understand the procedure of COPE sittings. When I was the chairman of COPE, he appeared on many occasions as the secretary to the Ministry of Power. Doesn't such an official know that remarks can't be made like that? Doesn't he know that he can't make irresponsible remarks? He is fearing for his life after speaking the truth. The people should know the threats he has received. Gothabi Rajpaksa can say something and be safe because there is heavy security protection for him. Ferdinando doesn't enjoy that protection. If Ferdinando said the truth and has been threatened, then he must be protected. Where is the letter he sent in November? If I was the chairman, that is what I would ask him. Gautam Adani, the owner of the Adani Group and a close ally of Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi, had met President Gautabai Rajpaksa and Mahindra Rajpaksa on the 26th of October last year. Officials from the Adani Group had visited Sri Lanka's northern region to explore the possibility of a renewable energy project. On the 16th of November 2021, the name of Adani Green Energy Company had figured during a meeting convened by the President at his office. The following day, the Finance Ministry had submitted to the Cabinet a proposal of Adani Green Energy for the renewable energy project. On the 17th of November 2021, Adani Green Energy's Managing Director and CEO Vineet Jain had sent a proposal for two massive projects. This was in addition to a wind and solar power project to generate 500 megawatts of power. The company had also proposed to implement a 5 gigawatt wind and 2 gigawatt solar power project in Sri Lanka. Adani Green Energy had also proposed to set up a transmission system to export electricity generated through these projects to India. The company had said Sri Lanka will be able to obtain electricity from them as well. Approval for these projects had been granted by disregarding the process of calling for competitive bids and generating electricity at the lowest possible cost. Now, 
the government has amended the country's electricity laws to allow these projects to go ahead. Renewable energy projects are not opposed by anyone as it allows power generation at a low cost in an eco-friendly manner. However, the decision to hand over the tenders for these projects to India's Adani company a day after a meeting with the president raises serious questions. As proposed by the Adani company, if a transmission system is set up to supply electricity from Sri Lanka to India, what would happen if India controls Sri Lanka's power supply?